but she's in the 10th grade. High school's almost over, it gets so expensive. Luckily, Martin and I thought ahead, and when Molly was a baby, we, we put away some money for bail. So, what am I gonna do the, the day she leaves the house? It's gonna be excruciating. I was talking to my friend Cindy about it, and she said, you know what, Rita, don't worry, because college is only four years, and then they come home and they live with you for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Because she has a son, wait, do you, what do you hear? He went to Ivy League College, came home, lives in the basement, and he's a bouncer. <laughs> Not at a nightclub, he just has a ball and he likes to bounce it. <laughs> and there are gonna be no jobs anyway. I mean, what's Molly gonna do? I was trying to think what the world is gonna need in the future, and I think what Molly should be is a tattoo remover. <laughs> Because a lot of people are going to be happy with the decisions they made in their youth. And some people are going to say, you know, I like French toast. I don't know why I seared it into my forehead. <laughs> and there's so many things I don't understand about young people. Maybe you can help me. I don't understand the clothes. Young boys' clothing is getting looser and lower. Young girls' clothing is getting tighter and higher. Saw so a young couple crossing the street. He was wearing a blanket. She was wearing a blindfold. <laughs> Here's something I'll never understand, the pierced tongue. And I think strange things, I can't stop myself. Like, if they take it out and then they eat soup, does it fall through the hole? <laughs> and it's always young people who go into body piercing, I might have figured this out. I think it's because they haven't experienced a lot of pain in their lives yet. You never see a 90-year-old person wake up and say, you know what I'd like to do today? <laughs> Just as a present to myself. Punch a hole in a tender organ. <laughs> and I know, I know tattoos are all the rage and I would never get one, but you know what? Luckily, on my left leg, I have a vein in the shape of a ship. I don't understand the music. Madonna's music used to be shocking, but you know what it is now? It's elevator music. I was in an elevator. I heard, like a virgin, touched for the very first time. What's elevator music gonna be like in 30 years? Got something itching in my pants and it's swinging to and fro. But I can't scratch it, my shorts are too low. For your enjoyment, that was performed by the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. My second baby is my oldest daughter who's about to graduate from the University of Tennessee. She's 22, and let me tell y'all, I know every crow thinks theirs is the blackest, but let me say that she is a beauty, and she is smart, and um, she's done very well in school, and she's in a sorority, and done well with her sorority, and she's um, athletic, and uh, she's mean. And um, we're scared to death of her. We walk on eggshells around her. She's not mean to other people, or in public. She holds it in so that she can come home and like spew it out onto me. That's okay. That's God's way. But this is what I think happens. When she was a junior, her summer between her junior and senior year, I think that God allows this to happen. And you little girls, if your babies aren't this old, let me just listen to me. All right, one day they'll just turn on you. And you'll think, who in the world is this? Who's coming down the steps in the morning? We don't know who this is. I think that God allows that because he knows that you're about to let your baby go off to college or whatever they're gonna do, and he knows that you're grieving. So he makes them just as mean as he can <laughs> so that you can let them go. And I believe that. 
that summer, the very breath that I breathed out of my nostrils made her so angry. We were not allowed to eat cereal in our own home because she couldn't stand to hear us chew. I don't mean to talk about her because she had a lot on her. She had to empty the dishwasher. (laughs) Stuff like that. That's so hard. Okay, let me tell you about an example when she was probably your baby's age. Your, y'all, y'all's little children, because y'all are so cute. Look, they, their thyroid's still functioning. Y'all still got hair. Good for y'all. Um, y'all got on little britches. Yay. Okay. When my baby, when my middle one, when she was in elementary school, I was so blessed that I got to pick, take them to school and pick them up every day in my minivan. <laughs> and I would watch them come out, my girls, and I saw them. They were in a good mood. I saw it. All right, they would be goosing each other and waving to all the little children and the principal. See you tomorrow. Okay. Then they they come over to my minivan, get in, slam the door. That middle woman take her backpack and sling me in the back of the head with it. She'd say every day something like, I'm starving to death. You don't have a piece of cheese in this car? Your driving's making me car sick. I hate her. Why did you have her? And the baby be sitting over the bank. She'd be going, Mom, 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 Mom. And I'd say, what? And she'd go, Mom, 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 Mom. I go, what? I'm listening. She could say some of the craziest things. She said to me one day, did Jesus ever have head lice? How do you answer that? I said, well, baby, I don't, I don't know. But if he did, I know we healed it. And I am an older mother. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, we adopted Molly because, well, okay, I'll tell you, because women, we always tell strangers intimate details about our lives. <laughs> we do. And I couldn't, I tried to get pregnant, but I couldn't. And it turned out that when I was younger, I'd made some mistakes. And I'd spent too much time in jacuzzis, and what had happened was that I had, um, I had accidentally hard-boiled my eggs. (laughs) So sad. And Martin and I discussed surrogacy. I went to a doctor, and he explained the procedure very thoroughly. He said, what I'm going to have to do here is take the eggs out of a young girl and fertilize them with your husband's sperm. And Martin said, wait a second, why why do you have to take the eggs out? (laughs) So we adopted. Yes, we did. And I used to worry about being an older mother, but you know what? You can share things with your child that you can't share when you're younger. I I remember that very special day when we both lost some teeth at the same time. (laughs) And that very first picture she drew of me, I said, Molly, I love it. It's so special. Maybe next time you could draw mommy's breast just a little higher. That'd be nice. (laughs) There are other reasons it's good to be an older mother. Um, Molly said, Mommy, when did you get your ears pierced? And I said, when I was 13. And she said, well, I want to get my ears pierced when I'm 12 because I want to do everything one year younger than you. I said, okay. She said, when did you get your first cell phone? I said, when I was 47. (laughs) And now she doesn't need a mother because she has a phone. And Siri, who lives in the phone, is very smart, much smarter than her mother. I'm not too fond of Siri. Let me tell you what Siri did to me. The first thing Molly did was ask Siri, who is Rita Rudner? And Siri said, Rita Rudner is a comedian who was born September 17th, 19. I said, turn Siri off now. 
But she didn't, and Siri kept talking. And Siri said, Rita Rudnew is born September 17th, 1953. And I'll wait while you all do the math. <laughs> Raise your hand when you have the answer, yes. And I had been lying to Molly and to the country. <laughs> and USA Today didn't find out, and Entertainment Tonight didn't find out, but Siri knows people. <laughs> and Molly remembered, and Molly said, Mommy, you said you were born in 1955, and Siri said you were born in 1953. And I said, well, I guess I'm gonna have to tell you the truth, but please keep it to yourself, because not many people know this, but, but Siri has a drinking problem. <laughs> And I have three children that I'm in love with, and um, I am now an empty nester. They, I have two in college and one married. And I, um, you think I'd look forward to being an empty nester. Some people go, woo, I don't feel woo. I miss them, my husband misses them. Um, I found Netflix when I... <laughs> When the last one left, my baby child, she's now 20, when she left, I took to the bed. And I ate chocolate-covered blueberries that you get at Target. And, and I found Netflix, and I um, binge-watched Scandal. Have y'all seen Scandal? That first season, the, the chemistry between the two main characters. I think something's really going on. Anyway, it set me on fire. And so I laid up in the bed and watched that and like ordered Jimmy John's from my bed. And my husband <laughs> said, are you all right? But I ended up getting sciatica from laying in the bed. I didn't get bed sores. I got sciatica and then ended up having to get physical therapy that cost $1,000 because of my deductible. But anyway, but I grieve so much over my kids being gone. All right, so when my husband gets home, he's as sad as I am. When he gets home, we just stare out into space. And he's, he's very quiet. He's an introvert. He doesn't talk. He doesn't chat. So I just sit and talk to myself. And we have two beagle hounds, and we just sit and kiss them in the mouth. <laughs> and they are yummy. <laughs> and we go to bed, and I, I, a lot of y'all look really young in here, and I'm going to scare y'all to death, but I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to tell, look at these young girls right here, I'm going to tell y'all what's your future. It's gonna be, okay? All right, when you get to be about your mid-40s, you're gonna go through, start a thing called perimenopause. It's before you go through menopause, and it makes you crazy. And you sweat in the bed at night. Okay, and you, all your hormones get messed up. All right, I go to the bedroom, and I am so hot at night that I put the air on 68, because I don't wanna die. <laughs> My husband puts it back up on 70, and he says, you're freezing me to death. He's having to wear pajamas for the first time in our marriage. Okay. He said, I can see my breath. That's a lie. But I know he is cold, because one time he had to wear a toboggan. But anyway, we get in the bed, and that big beagle, who is 10 years old, a boy named Augie, who is so sweet, my husband spoons him in the bed. <laughs> and then we've got a new little beagle that is a pocket beagle, and her name is Gigi, and she is so yummy. And she, she had a nervous tick when we got her, and she ate our couch. But other than that, I love her. And she gets in the bed, and she backs her little butthole up against my head. <laughs> at night, right here, and when we get, all right, so when my husband spoons that big one, that big one will wall his eyes at me and, and looks like, I don't want him. I want you. So I know I talk about getting older, but let me tell you a good thing about getting older is I have vintage clothes and I'm the original owner. 
So this dress I originally wore in Comic Relief in 2006. Thank the Lord it stretches. <laughs> and I don't have Spanx on either. Gaffer tape. Yes. <laughs> Tried duct tape, but it didn't hold. I just, I don't give any of my clothes. I have my clothes carefully divided up into three groups. Clothes I can wear now. Clothes I might be able to wear again at some point. And clothes I'm never, ever going to be able to wear again, even if someone cuts me in half. <laughs> I have a pair of jeans. I'm telling you, the Israelis and Palestinians have a better chance of getting together than this zipper. <laughs> I won't give up. There's always a chance I could get shingles and lose a few pounds. <laughs> Because women were always trying to get into better shape, but I have friends now who are having operations. Not a good idea. One of my friends had that balloon put in her stomach, but you know what happened? She sneezed and it came undone and she flew around the room. <laughs> Even the supplements are dangerous. One of my friends took those one of those supplements they, you see on TV, guaranteed she would lose five inches. She got shorter. <laughs> Women, we like to exercise, but we like to exercise and talk. I have two friends, they like to jog and talk, they biked and talked, swam and drowned. <laughs> I mean, even my great-great-grandmother used to take yoga, always bragging about how limber she was. I could touch the back of my knee to my nose. No, she had a fake leg, that didn't count. Come on. <laughs> So I have given this subject a lot of thought and I have decided that as an older woman, I do not want to be in really good shape and I'll tell you why. Because I don't want to be one of those women who looks great from the back and then turns around and frightens people. I think, I think the back should match the front. That's what I think. And you know what I love now? Compliments. Compliments make me so happy. And I find as time goes by, I'm less picky about compliments. <laughs> the other day I was giving blood and the technician said, nice veins. And I said, allow me to take you to dinner. Thank you. <laughs> Some compliments are kind of underhanded. I was trying a dress on in a store and a saleswoman said to me, that's a very forgiving dress. <laughs> I know. I said, then you'll forgive me if I don't buy it from you. Thank you so much. When I was younger, I was insulted by compliments. I'd be walking down the street in Manhattan and a construction worker would yell out, yo mama, bring it over here. And I'd think to myself, well, you animal. <laughs> Treated me like a piece of meat. The other day I was walking down the street and a man who'd recently regained consciousness <laughs> rolled out from under a bench and vomit dribbled down his chin and he opened up his crusty, pussy, bloodshot eyes and he said, Gina, you're a good-looking woman. And I said, and you, sir, are a fine gentleman with excellent taste. Thank you so much. Oh, y'all. I'm so, so much more, than, way more than I have. And since I had a baby in the hospital, I probably weigh about the same that I had a baby in the hospital. And back then, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, what in the world's happened to me? And I had my class reunion right after I had my first baby, and I wore a big jumper, and I was nursing. And I remember, um, like, drinking a Diet Coke, and my breast milk shot out the front of my dress. <laughs> and then one of my friends from high school said, when are you going to have your baby? And I was like, I've had my baby. <laughs> But anyway, I feel fat, and um, and I am, and it's my hormones. I have no testosterone. I went to the doctor. I had no testosterone, no progesterone. I have way too much estrogen, which evidently makes you bitter and angry, and hateful. That's what my family says. I think they're bitter and hateful and angry. But it has messed up my weight and all that. Well, that and I've been eating white flour. But let me, I have been on every diet in the world. I've done everything. I've done Whole30. I've done I've, South Beach. I can't even, 
I have done Weight Watchers, or I praise God that Weight Watchers doesn't have a limit on how many times you can join. Because I have joined Weight Watchers nine times and lost seven pounds in all. Come to find out, you have to follow a program. I know that, but I go because the meetings are funny. And it's like, it's like going to a comedy club. It really is. It's like AA, but it's for people who eat their emotions. And, I, and that's who I am. I eat my emotions. Like my husband would come home and the kids would be fighting and he'd say something like, what have you done all day? And I'd eat a hot dog and I don't even know where it came from. <laughs> Well, I had to, to keep from drinking whiskey. I didn't want to get hooked on whiskey with little children. So, um, so I joined Weight Watchers so many times, and this last time, I, Oprah bought it. And they had Oprah on TV, and she is twirling pasta on a fork and running through tall grass. And I thought, well, if she can do it, I can do it. No, so, um, no, turns out, no, for the ninth time. But what the deal is, is they give you a point value on food. So, fruits and vegetables are free. You don't, you don't care, really. And like a piece of beef that's the size of a credit card. It's like five points or something like that. You don't want any of that. You're so hungry when you start that you could eat the wallpaper off the walls. You want a Snickers bar, but they're like 12 points. My sister goes on it every time I do, and she'll call me and she'll say, it's noon, and I've eaten all my points. 